Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here with a very quick, I hope one episode, quilt tutorial. I've had a quilt on my mind for quite a while and I'm going to finally try it today. I kept thinking I would try it in advance just to see if it would work, but I never get around to doing that. So we're just going to make it together and see how it turns out. This is going to be a flannel rag quilt, and it is a little bit different in that we're not cutting squares. It's going to be a one-piece rag quilt. I got this idea by someone who had made a rag quilt using all the same print, but she had cut the squares and then put them back together to make the rag quilt and I was like I don't think we need to do any cutting if we want to use just one print I happen to have some flannels in solids I have two shades of pink so I'm just going to be making a solid rag quilt absolutely feel free to go buy yourself some flannel in pretty prints because that will just make it that much better but we're going with solids and uh, let's just get started I am not washing my fabric first. With rag quilts, I like to wash after the fact so it can get more puffy and all that stuff. I will tell you that I'm going to be using just two layers. I'm not going to have anything in the middle. We certainly don't want polyester batting because of the way we're going to be uh, snipping the and doing the ragging. Polyester batting will absolutely not work for this project. Cotton batting, maybe so, but I would skip that too. I would just go with an extra layer of flannel in the center if you do want it heavier or thicker or more raggedy. So you can do three pieces of flannel. I'm going with two. Also, you may remember the little trick I do about putting extra flannel around the edges to make the edges more raggedy. I'm skipping that this time too. Just want to knock out something quick for those of you who want to be able to just knock something out really quick. And we're going to uh, try it. We can elaborate on this later if we want to make the edges more raggedy and all that stuff. So what I'm doing is I've determined that my flannel is approximately 40 inches wide wide. Obviously, this is folded. So I'm going to cut a piece 40 inches long. So you would need like one and an eighth yards. In, you know, you could just buy a yard and a quarter of two prints and you'll be safe that way. So I'm going to uh, not, you know, worry about being absolutely careful at this point because we don't have to be careful with rag quilts. So let me turn this around because I want to be able to measure and I'm just going to say 20 inches and about 40 right there. And I'll just cut a little extra. And I just eyeball it and cut straight across because I trust myself like that. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same with my other color pink. I will press them just to make them, you know, not so lumpy and I'll be right back. I did want to show that instead of measuring the light pink, I just laid the first one that I cut, and I'm just going to cut using that as a guide. And again, it's okay if things are not all matchy-matchy. Okay, I will actually press something I don't normally do, but this is pretty wrinkled. Now I just got an idea. First, you need to decide which side you want the ragging to be done on. Normally people rag the top, so which color do you want or which print do you want on top? You need to decide that. I'm going to have the light pink be the top and that's the side that I will be ragging. I see here that my center crease is quite visible. I just wanted to flatten this out a little bit. I'm not trying to get rid of creases because that's all going to be taken care of in the wash. So I'm going to put this crease on the table upside down and I'm going to do it sideways just so it's easier for me and it might look like I have some little stains here but I was just wild and crazy with my iron and I spit water out and now I'm going to do the same thing with this one crease side you know where the bump is <laughs> the bumpy side of the crease is on the table and I'm taking the bumpy side of the crease and I'm going to line it up. This is going to make sure that we kind of sort of have the centers in the same spot. So I'm going to just line it up here and here. 
pretty cool. I don't know if you can see the crease line, but there it is. I'm going to put a couple of pins, but I'm going to use safety pins. Hang on. Not going to need too many pins, but I will put a few. If you have those rounded or curved quilt pins, you can use those. I do want to come out a good like four or five inches away from that center seam because we're going to be doing some sewing. So I'm just going to put a couple of pins here. I don't know if I even really want to bother with any pins. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to fold this and have this line be the fold as best as we can. I'm just going to find the fold on this side. See, that's pretty easy if we do it on the fold like that. Okay, so far so good. We're going to go sew on this fold. And you could sew anywhere from like a half inch in to an inch in. So let's go to the machine. Here I am. I haven't had you at the sewing machine with me in a long time. Okay, so far this is easy. Let's hope I can continue with easy <laughs> and that it works. So here's my fold. And again, I want to sew on the side that I want to be ragged. And I want the pink to be ragged. And that's going to be my top. Obviously, this is a like double-sided blanket. You can have either side be up top. So I'm going to follow my number six line. So I'm doing three quarters of an inch. You can do whatever you want as long as, um, you know, you have something to follow as a guide. And even if you're not sewing perfectly straight, that's okay. Is that going to be enough ragging for me? I'm going to go out a little bit more. All right. See, I can't make up my mind. I kind of like an inch. Yeah, I'm about at an inch. So I'm going with that. So I'm just going to sew all the way down. If you have a walking foot, you can use that. Yay! I don't really think I needed to pin anything because this was pretty easy to do. I'm going to, you know, this doesn't slide around at all. I'm just going to show you up here at this camera, but then I'm going to go do it on the table because I don't want to, you know, do it all and screw it up. What I'm going to do is find some scissors and I'm going to be sticking my scissors in and snipping all along the top of that fold. See what I mean, Jelly Bean? And that's going to be what we're going to snip to rag after. So let's go over to the table. I went ahead and took the pins out. I don't think I'll need pins. You feel free to use pins if you want, and you're welcome to use straight pins if you think you can do it without hurting yourself. <laughs> now this did bunch up a little bit, but hey, this is a rag quilt, so I'm not concerned about it. And I'm just laying it on its side, and I'm going to stick my scissors in there and just cut right along that fold. You can do this now, or we could do it when we're done. I'm doing it now. So instead of cutting our fabric and then sewing it together, we're sewing it together and then cutting. I think I'm going to do just one more line. We'll make nice big blocks out of this. So I'm going to now open this up. And my edges are not even, and I'm not concerned about that at this point at all. And I think it's better if I do it this way. So here's my line that we just sewed and I'm going to take this and fold it up and I'm going to go past this line and if you have a fabric that's shorter than the other you know go past it with that so I'm passing that probably like an inch looks pretty straight to me and now I'm going to sew down this fold that I just created and you know what just for the heck of it I trust myself with a couple of straight pins here. So let's go sew down this fold. If you get confused as to like which side you're supposed to be sewing on, just remember 
Whatever side you chose as the top, I chose light pink. So when I come here to the machine, I'm supposed to be sewing on light pink. If I have dark pink showing, that's because I folded it the wrong way. So this is what we're going with. Light pink for me. And that's it, just going to sew. Let's go to the table and snip. Well, at this point, I'm not really snipping, but I'm going to go ahead and stick my, let's cut this thread off, stick my scissors in here and just cut all along that fold. Can you see what I'm doing? You sort of can. Easy as that. Now let's turn it this way and we're going to do another side. So this time, here's my center seam. I'm going to take these edges and I'm going to fold up this way. And I'm not, you know, really concerned if it's perfectly the same width as the other strip I did. Just don't care about that. Couple of straight pins. Back to the machine we go. And I think for this one, that's all we're going to do in that direction. So I'm going to cut down the fold. And this is what we have so far. You could certainly make yourself a strip quilt this way, but we're going to go and finish this up as you know, like we're making blocks. Okay, my pink side is down. My top is down. I'm folding in half. This way. I'm going to somewhat make sure these are kind of, sort of lined up. That looks pretty good to me. And the only thing that I'm going to do to make it not so thick is I want to make sure that this is opened here. You'll see it better at the machine. So I don't have to sew, you know, to one side. That's pretty cool. So let me turn this one. You could go press these open if you wanted to, <laughs> but you know me. Okay. I will put in a couple of straight pins. And we're going to go sew this way now. I wanted to mention, you are certainly able to do this with a big quilt because you never have a lot of fabric under your sewing machine arm. Even though the fabric might be big, it will all be on your sewing table. You know, we never have to deal with it under the arm of the machine. So it's just a matter of whether or not you have the space to put the two pieces together. And uh, you can just go with it. And you do not have to use flannel. You could make yourself an awesome cotton blanket by just using cotton. It would not be as thick. It would be easier to sew. This definitely would, you know, do better with a walking foot. But, you know me, I just like to just do things any old way I can do them. I thought I had a walking foot, but I don't think I do. Or I lost it. But I will get one. Just making sure that this is all opened up on both sides. Same with this one. Feels good. Oh my goodness, I just recorded this whole step and my camera was not on. So what I did is I'm here, I put the pink side down, my top side down, and this is my back side. And this is the seam that we sewed in this direction. I took my fabric and I folded it up past that center seam. And I opened up all these seams to make them flat. And now we're just going to sew on this fold. You'll see how I do it when I do the other side. I promise I won't forget to turn the camera on. I said a couple of funny things too while my camera was off. Bet you fucking missed it. I have not suffered a pin injury yet during this tutorial. 
Okay, I will turn the other camera on. I think during the last step when the camera was off, I was not able to show you that I cut along the fold just like we did when we were going in the other direction. And I'm going to do that again right here, right now. We're doing exactly the same thing we did in the other direction, only in this direction. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Just watch what I do. You'll get the hang of it. Okay, so just to show you, see, we're making our like little checkerboard pattern. So, we're putting the top down. We've got our last thing to sew. Taking the edge, I'm folding it up and beyond that center line. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Ha! Huh, lovely. I'm opening up these seams so they can lay flat. And we're going to go sew down this fold. I just suffered my first injury. I stuck my thumb with this guy right here. I definitely like sewing in about an inch with flannel. With cotton, just regular quilt cotton, it would not be as thick, but with flannel, this is pretty thick here. So you wouldn't want to be too close to the edge. I don't know. I just like it about an inch in. Camera is on. We're going to open up this. Yeah, and an inch makes it easier to cut too. So go with an inch. Oh my goodness. Now, all we have left to do is to sew one time around the edge. But I never trimmed the salvages, and I do want to trim the salvages because that's not going to, like, unravel good. And then I'll be able to even it up also. So, let's see. I'm going to, just to make it easy-ish, point to fold this in half this way. And I'm going to just straighten out my edges. Now that other pink was quite a bit shorter on that side, but that's okay. Just going to trim it, try to get all four layers so that they're kind of even. Make sure I get the salvages off. Can you even see what I'm doing? You can. And do the same on this side. I make sure I cut the pink. The dark pink is shorter, so I gotta make sure I cut it out. All right, let's see what I've got going on down here. I can trim this up a little bit right here. I don't care if it's not even. I just don't want salvages. And you can cut your salvages off at the beginning if you prefer. Okay, we're going to go sew all the way around this baby with, again, about an inch um, seam allowance. Please don't worry if your edges are not straight because it's all getting snipped. Now this is where I had said we could have added fabric so that when we snip the edges it's thicker, but we didn't do that on this one. I think I'm going to elaborate and do this again and do the edges and maybe do like a three layer. I don't know if I get a walking foot. All right, here I go. I'm just going all the way around. I'm just opening up these seams. You can stop and turn, or you can just go right off the edge, like I just did, and then go this way. If you wanted to go around twice, like another quarter of an inch in, if you remember we determined that that looked pretty cool, especially on the back side, uh, when I did it that way, or if you have a double needle. But for this tutorial, I'm just stopping here. I'm trying to make this be a one hour quilt and I'm going to do it. Now all we need to do is our snipping. Let's go back to the other table and I'll show you how to do that. 
This was so easy, you guys. We didn't have to cut any squares and put them together. Oh my God. And like I said, if it's not perfectly straight, doesn't matter. Whatever child you give this to is going to love it. All right, or to your pets, or to yourself as a lap blanket. We're going to snip, let me see here, all around the edge. You can get yourself some little handy dandy snipping shears like this that are spring loaded so it helps not, you know, wear out your hand. Or you can use scissors. Just make sure you do not cut through the line you sewed. And that's why it's nice to um, do another line an in, uh, about a quarter of an inch in because if you happen to snip this line, well, you're safe. You can cut a quarter of an inch all the way to a half an inch apart and it doesn't have to be even. So you're going to do that all the way around and when you get to this part, you can, you know, if your scissors can handle it, you just cut through all of it at once like that. If not, you can always lift and, you know, just cut this and then cut this. The other thing you have to do is cut all this stuff in each direction. Here, you just want to put your scissors under and just snip all the way across. And you would do that on both sides. And when you get here, you, again, you want to snip so that it isn't stuck with that seam. You want it to flap up. So I will finish that. And then um, you can go right across like this and just keep going. Then when you're done all that way, you can go ahead and come in this way. And you can uh, fold it or not. It's up to you. And again, you would just come in and start snipping. And when you get to this part, you just snip through everything. You just do a lot of snipping. And it's going to go really quick because we don't have a whole lot to snip. So let me snip the entire thing. I will put it in the washer and dryer and then I will show you how it came out. I do get asked how I snip the corners. I tend to do the diagonal. I snip on the diagonal and then I just keep, you know, kind of like going around like that and that stuff will fray. You can just, you know, you just want it to be able to fray. So whatever way you can snip it, it'll all work. You guys, this is like a ginormous success. I absolutely loved this process. And it looks like we started out with a bunch of squares and that we lined them up perfectly. And I even like that it's solid. But again, you can use prints if you want. The only, as I slide toward you, the only downside to this particular one is that I still have a lot of little, like, lint balls all over the place. It's not pilled. It's just loose. I took some tape and I tried to take it off, but I'm in a hurry. Survivor's on tonight. The finale, so I want to see it. And uh, so I wasn't able to clean it up yet, but I will. This is what the back looks like. And again, I shook it as much as I could, but the back is awesome. Absolutely love this. And it's not even really fully dry yet because again, I'm in a hurry. So this is what the ragging looks like so far. And that will rag more so nice and fluffy and the edge is not as thick because that's only two layers whereas all this is four that's why I said when I do it uh, usually I add fabric so that this is thicker and we will get around to doing that came out so good uh, let's see about how big this ended up being we're looking at about 33 inches squared once again, just a nice size for a kid, for a pet, for your car, on your lap, on the couch. And here's what I'm going to say about this. I have so many ideas. We're going to do some other variations to this using just the two fabrics. I think a muslin and denim one would be fantastic. And, you know, the... The little threads won't cling like it does to flannel. Another thing is, this makes a perfect cheater's quilt. If you could find flannel or even quilt cotton, and when I say quilt cotton, just 
cotton, any kind of cotton that you want to use. If you could find like, you know, where it's like checkerboard already, you could fold and sew where the blocks connect. And then when you snip that, it would look like if you could get blocks, it would look like it was different colors, like you put it all together. I know it's probably hard to imagine, but it is hard to find fabric like that with perfect blocks. But another thing is sometimes panels, like the ones that I sell on Fabric Frenzy Days, sometimes those panels are like evenly spaced and that could be ragged in that way. It could be folded, sew, cut along that fold, and it would look like you put those squares together. I think that's very interesting, and I'm dying to try it, but, but I can't justify using one of the panels that I bought because I have a hard time getting multiples of the panels, and they're for fabric frenzy, so I'm not going to touch one unless I find some one time that has a lot, like, you know, more than five, then I will probably use one just to show you what I'm talking about. But I have some other ideas for this. And again, it doesn't have to be squares. It could be strip quilt. It could be strips and it could be very narrow strips so that there's a lot of ragging. It would take a lot of snipping. But it would be really cool. It would almost look like chenille. Have you ever seen when they make the chenille blankets? I want to do that at some point. But it takes a lot of layers. So it can be a bit pricey depending on what you use for the fabric. I think generally it's five layers. And um, But anyway, we'll play with this. So I hope you liked this process. Very, very easy. And it did take me less than an hour to do the sewing part. And that is with me talking to you guys. But the snipping itself took about another 30 minutes. I'm still calling this a one hour quilt because the sewing part all put together in an hour and then you just got to snip and you can do that while watching TV. So thank you so much for watching. I uh, will be back with more soon. Bye.